Good. So let's talk about anxiety. I got really excited about CGM a long time ago. People like were wide-eyed that I was using it with non-diabetics and thought, what is this freak doing? But I thought it was so important to my patients. I still have a huge barrier here. Medical insurance companies do not pay for CGMs for people that are not diagnosed with type 1 or type 2 diabetes. But how important is anxiety? What is it? And just your view and on CGM. Yeah, I think that I love that this is now finally becoming more of a mainstream conversation. Mm. I'm sure you're feeling very vindicated after mm. however many years of swimming upstream and convincing people to get involved with CGMs. Blood sugar is so vital. And this has to do with the fact that for a very long portion of human evolution, having enough to eat was a matter of life or death. And we just have such different availability of what and how much and, and what, what food is available and when and in what ways. Mm -hmm. And it's just not the conditions under which we evolved. And I think that with our processed foods engineered to be hyper palatable, and, you know, so often it always tends towards things that tend to spike our blood sugar. Many of us are walking around quite dysglycemic and symptomatic as a result in ways that we didn't know to attribute. Most people think blood sugar is just a matter of diabetes. And then even within that, they think diabetes is diabetes. That's, that's the last stop. It gives you diabetes. And maybe that leads to retinopathy or, or other issues, but we need to recognize it's not narrow, it's incredibly broad. And dysglycemia and the consequences in our bodies relates to dementia and mental health and cardiovascular health and longevity. And you know, I, I heard you had Joel Salatin on, on your podcast at one point, love him. Yeah, yeah. And he, in Omnivore's Dilemma, he introduced an idea that I think about all the time. I, if I'm not getting it wrong, I hope. He said, you know, people think, oh, you're a farmer, do you raise cattle? Do you raise goats? Are you raising chickens? He's like, no, we're grass farmers. Everyone, yeah. maybe it's soil, grass. It's yeah. basically everyone's a grass farmer. Yeah, that's that's right. the lifeblood of the yeah. farm. And I think as human beings, we are all vasculature farmers. Mm. Our vasculature, the functioning of our vasculature is the lifeblood of every other organ system working properly. And when we're dysglycemic and our blood sugar is spiking and the oxidative and inflammatory impact that that has, we're damaging our microvasculature, which in, in ways that are apparent can impact the health of our eyes, the health of our calves. But in ways that are subtler, it's chronically over time impacting our brain health, our heart health, um, every, our kidney health. We're, we're not vital when our vasculature is damaged, which it is by our modern food environment of refined carbohydrates and added sugars and inflammatory foods. So CGMs, I love because sometimes we need a little bit of an objective instrument to be like, it's really happening. <laughs> and then yeah. it gives people the ability to do real time science for themselves. I want to eat my oatmeal for breakfast, but now I'm seeing it spikes my blood sugar. But if I add a little bit of nut butter and it doesn't spike it quite yeah. as much, or if I start with eggs and bacon, then I'm really home free. Yeah. And just for people to have that real time feedback can really influence their behavior and their choices. Mm. Um, so I think it's everything and it's mm -hmm. underappreciated in mental health with anxiety when our blood sugar spikes as it does in our modern diet, because it's all refined carbohydrates and coffee drinks that are secretly milkshakes and rosé all day. Our blood sugar is on a roller coaster. And every time it crashes, we have a stress response. That's how the body cues the liver to break down the storage of starch that it maintains the glycogen stores. And it also creates urgency to forage for food. And so we're in these unnecessary stress responses, which feel synonymous with anxiety or even panic. And it's just coming from our blood sugar roller coaster ride. So if we can maintain stable blood sugar, this can stave off a lot of unnecessary anxiety. Sure. So would you say that person listening out there who struggled with anxiety, who struggled with depression or burnout should get us one of the big sort of markers or biohacking tools or devices is a CGM? It depends on the person. I think in general, yes. I am always here to support someone who's who just wants to listen to their body. You know, and I have a lot of patients who we got into this work before CGMs were even all yeah. that available. And so they just started to learn, oh, this is what it feels like when I'm in a blood sugar crash. And they've done that self-experimentation in a more analog way. But I think if CGM is accessible to someone, it's a wonderful tool. 